Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer today for November 25th, 2023. Happy Thanksgiving or post-Thanksgiving. Glad that you are with me. Today is International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women. Eval, eval. Uh, National Parfait Day. Small Business Saturday. Aura Awareness Day and Blase Day. Let's go ahead and get started. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Join me in the thanksgiving for baptism. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Redeeming God, we give you thanks that through the gift of our baptism, you have clothed us in your grace and made us heirs of your promise. By the power of your Holy Spirit, set us free from all that we fear and let us live according to our faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Our reading for today is Leviticus chapter 2. Listen for God's word to speak to you. When anyone presents a grain offering to Adonai, the offering shall be of choice flour. The worshiper shall pour oil on it and put frankincense on it and bring it to Aaron's sons, the priests. After taking from it a handful of the choice flour and oil with all its frankincense, the priest shall turn this token portion into smoke on the altar, an offering by fire of pleasing odor to Adonai. And what is left of the grain offering shall be for Aaron and his sons, a most holy part of the offering, by fire to Adonai. When you present a grain offering baked in the oven, it shall be of choice flour, unleavened cakes mixed with oil, or unleavened wafers spread with oil. If your offering is grain prepared on a griddle, it shall be of choice flour mixed with oil, unleavened. Break it in pieces and pour oil on it. It is a grain offering. If your offering is grain prepared in a pan, it shall be made of choice flour in oil. You shall bring to Adonai the grain offering that is prepared in any of these ways. And when it is presented to the priest, he shall take it to the altar. The priest shall remove from the grain offering its token portion and turn this into smoke on the altar, an offering by fire of pleasing odor to Adonai. And what is left of the grain offering shall be for Aaron and his sons. It is a most holy part of the offering by fire to Adonai. No grain offering that you bring to Adonai shall be made with leaven, for you must not turn any leaven or honey into smoke as an offering by fire to Adonai. You may bring them to Adonai as an offering of choice products, but they shall not be offered on the altar for a pleasing odor. You shall not omit from your grain offerings the salt of the covenant with your God. With all your offerings you shall offer salt. If you bring a grain offering of first fruits to Adonai, you shall bring as the grain offering of your first fruits coarse new grain from fresh ears, parched with fire. You shall add oil to it and lay frankincense on it. It is a grain offering, and the priest shall turn a token portion of it into smoke, some of the coarse grain and oil with all its frankincense. It is an offering by fire to Adonai. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So our reading for today is now about grain offerings. So um, maybe we can understand a little bit more um, the idea of a uh, an animal sacrifice that makes uh, some sense to us to a certain point as worship. But this grain offering is 
simultaneously easier for us to understand and harder to understand. Um, in some ways, it is not too far off from our current practices of offering, which usually involve money. In the same way, sort of commodities, grain, flour, all those sorts of things um, were used when money as a sort of um, a in between sort of stand in for that uh, sort of physical stuff. Um, before that was a sort of robust thing that people would do, you would trade someone. If maybe they raise livestock and you, you know, uh, have grain, you're going to trade them. Maybe you get a goat and they get a sack of grain or whatever it is. I don't know what the, the trading rate is, uh, but it was a barter system, right? So not everyone has necessarily access to animals to give a sacrifice. And so there are times when you give grain offerings. Now, we will see later that these grain offerings are not sin offerings. We talked yesterday about sort of the uh, the use of animal sacrifice as this sort of cleansing of our sins, um, this way of sort of going up before God. That's definitely a part of that. Grain offerings tend to be more about thanksgiving. It's an offering you give at the beginning of the harvest when you say, God, I could not have had any of this without you. And so I give back a part of it to you. Um, and maybe uh, there are other times when grain offerings are appropriate, but usually it's in this sort of mode of Thanksgiving. Huh, interesting that that's coming up this week. Um, but that's kind of the idea is of these things that I have because you have given them to me, because you are in control of rain, because you are in control of the soil, because you are sort of behind uh, my ability to grow this this plant, I have no ability, right? Maybe I have some ability to grow a um, or raise an animal. That's kind of pretty clear where I'm giving them food, I'm taking care of them, that sort of thing. Plants are kind of a different thing. They do their own thing and, and they need that water. They need that cultivation. There's a, a way that we sort of join with them in that. And yet they kind of, it's different. Uh, maybe. I don't know if that's the, that's the case. But anyways, they bring these offerings of grain. And so there are some things to think about. And as we think about them in uh, sort of relation to our, our sacrificial offering type practices today, you notice over and over, there's this idea that this should be good grain, it should be choice grain, it should be choice flour, it should be choice whatever it is. Um, the point of that is it's not sort of the leftovers. Oh, you've done all your harvest and this stuff didn't look so good, so might as well go ahead and sacrifice it. That's not the purpose, right? This is the offering that comes off of the top. Um, it comes at the beginning of the month rather than at the end of the month to see how much is left over, right? It's that sort of thing. Um, so here, I'm going to give you this choice flour, this choice grain, this choice whatever. That's added to when um, the flour is, at, is given some frankincense. Uh, again, a pretty precious commodity, something that is, is, um, has value, great value in itself. And it's covered always in oil. We've talked before about this, but oil, especially for the ancient world, is this sort of distillation of all the goodness of creation. You take all of the goodness from, say, um, you have this olive tree, right? And the olive tree itself produces this amazing olive fruit. It sort of distills all of the goodness into this um, compact fruit pod thing, right? Well, you as a human being, you take those olives and you could eat them, sure. Um, but you take them and you squeeze them and it's like the liquid Eden. It is it is this oil that comes out of it. It's, it's fatty. It's not just liquid. Liquid is great, but it's fatty. Um, it has some, some weight to it. It has some viscosity to it. Um, it has, it's the sort of... Um, the flavor 
that comes from the olives or whatever you are, you know, think of cooking with baking grease, right? It's, it's that, um, that goodness, the, the joy, the fat, the overwhelming sort of um, abundance from whatever you get your oil from uh, in, in sort of this really, truly compact form. And so that's put over this uh, flour or grain or whatever it is to sort of anoint it, um, right, to, to cover it. You will see that anointing is important. Using that oil as the sign of God's goodness sort of on something, um, that's, that's also an element here. You also notice something that's very important that this offering is not given up entirely to the flames. It's not burnt up entirely. No part of it, whether grain or flour or whatever, or, or maybe you just bake some bread, right? And you give it, um, part of that goes to the priests. It's to feed them, right? There's, there's that element of it that um, the priests are unable because of their duties, but also because of eventually it gets to the point where the land is divided, and that means farmland, uh, the Levites don't get any of that land. Their role is not to cultivate grain. Their role is to cultivate a spiritual connection between God and people. That's what they're there for. And so people who are able to make grain or grow grain, bring it to the priests, and some of that goes to them so that they can eat, so they have something to eat that that um, harvest goes. We'll also see some places that seems to suggest that uh, a tithing, a bringing in of those first fruits is also for the provision for those who are poor, for those who do not have fields of their own, not only the priests, but also those uh, around them, orphans, widows, etc. One more thing is this um, lack of leaven. You're not supposed to have any leaven in these offerings, or at least in the ones that, or honey, leaven or honey, um, that are to be burned. There is provision. You could bake some bread. It might have some leaven in it. You bring it to the priests, you give it to them, but it's not to be burned. It's something different. Um, as I was reading, I was wondering if there is something to that about specifically yeast, but also um, like sourdough is technically a living creature. It's a living thing. Um, honey is not actually living, but it comes from the, the sort of, it is the produce of a living creature, a bee who produces this stuff, uh, this sort of condensed goodness um, that is, is the is part of the reproductive process and they grow their, their eggs in it, you know, all these sorts of things um, and stored up goodness for future, all of these sorts of things. I wonder if there's a connection there that um, you can take grain because there is maybe a sort of an assumption that that's, it's a plant with a particular purpose like that, but it also does not live in the same way that yeast does. Obviously, they didn't know that about yeast, but anyways, that's maybe maybe part of it. Who knows? There's some. There clearly yeast is very important. We see it in Passover. We see Jesus talking about yeast. Um, that is an, an important element, and it's not to be burned. Why that is, I don't know. Um, but some thoughts. So we have lots of ways. Uh, now we have two major ways that offerings can be given animal sacrifice, which has a much closer connection to uh, a restoration of relationship with God and atonement, a, a bringing together, and grain offering, which is more about thankfulness. It's more about giving back to God in recognition that God has allowed us to do everything that we do. Um, you also notice just an interesting thing that there's a lot about grain offering in this context, which is people in the wilderness. These are things that are not going to be immediately um, sort of practical for them. 
There are some who suggest that this is written considerably after uh, after the people are already in the land, and so it makes a little bit more sense in that context. But notice that there's there's a certain sort of stability that comes with being able to give grain offerings. It means you have land. It means that um, you can control that land for long enough for the grain to grow and ripen. Um, you can go through all of that process. Um, so anyways, I invite you to think about what is what is offering, what does sacrifice mean to you? What are the ways that these various sort of modes of giving, how do they coincide with the ways that you give of your time and talent and money. What does it mean to give of choice flour or choice grain instead of just grain or bad grain? What does it mean to uh, pour upon that goodness um, oil? What does it mean to withhold the yeast Take some time to journal, to meditate, to pray, to in some way reflect on these. What is what is the Spirit saying to you today? When you're ready, we'll join our hearts together in prayer. Give thanks to the Lord who is good. God's love is everlasting. Come, let us praise God joyfully. Let us come to God with thanksgiving. For children, for their energy and curiosity, for their brave play and startling frankness, for their sudden sympathies, thank you, God. For the young, for their high hopes, for their irreverence towards worn out values, for their search for freedom, for their solemn vows, thank you, God. For growing up and growing old. For wisdom deepened by experience. For rest and leisure. And for time made precious by its passing. Thank you, God. for your help in times of doubt and sorrow, for healing our diseases, for preserving us in temptation and danger. Thank you, God. for the church into which we have been called, for the good news we have received by word and sacrament, for our life together in the Lord. We praise you, God. For your Holy Spirit, who guides our steps and brings us gifts of faith and love, who prays in us and prompts our grateful worship, we praise you, God.
for what else do we pray? We pray for those on our continuing prayer list for Zoe and Teddy, for Ernest and Patricia, for Neil, for Buddy, for Tony, for Tom, for Wayne, for Bob, for David, and all of those struggling with continuing health issues. Above all, O oh God, for your child, Jesus Christ, who lived and died and lives again for our salvation, for our hope in him, and for the joy of serving him. We thank and praise you, eternal God, for all your goodness to us. Give thanks to the Lord who is good. God's love is everlasting. Now let us continue to pray using the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our dismissal is the Cherokee Prayer of Blessing. May the warm winds of heaven blow softly upon your house. May the Great Spirit bless all who enter there. May your moccasins make happy tracks in many snows. And may the rainbow always touch your shoulder. Thank you so much for joining me today for daily prayer. Join us tomorrow for worship at 1030. That is in person and virtual. You can also join us for Sunday school at 915 for adults and the kids and youth hang out starting around 930. Join us for more daily prayer on Monday and you can watch this daily prayer on YouTube. You can listen to it on wherever you listen to podcasts. And you can sign up for a email sent to you with the audio and the video version on Substack. That's free if you would like it to be. Check out our website, johncalvinchurch.org, for more information. Find us on Facebook and Instagram. You can also... Yeah, no, I think that's all the things. Anyways... Our uh, liturgy today came from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA, as well as the Cherokee Prayer for Blessing. Um, most of these prayers that I had this week came from Xavier University. They have a whole page of um, Native American prayers. That's excellent. Thanks for joining me. I love you dearly, and I'll see you next time.